Let's move on to talk about our ground rules and our housekeeping for today. Please type your questions into the chat. It will be open for most of the webinar. There will be a period of time where it may be closed, but we definitely want your questions and your input today. And we'll be asking for that at several different points throughout the day. One and a half hours ACV REP credit, as you already know, and our closed captioning is available today. Thank you for providing that. Now we have two people joining us today. The first you'll recognize if you've been part of our webinars, Betsy Ann Huggins is going to be one of the participants today. So she's our engagement and training specialist. And she also has a background in theater. You may have heard that. If not, you'll definitely recognize that today. And then David Tobin, who is the CEO and founder of Audio Jack. They will both be going through different things today. Uh, so you'll learn a lot about theater and a lot about Audio Jack. So we've got a few different things that we're going to be going over today. We're going to review the basics of dramatic writing, give you an idea of what that is all about. We'll identify the five key elements of a monologue. We'll write a monologue based on Audio Jack, so definitely a participatory webinar for you today. And we'll evaluate how you can use Audio Jack in educational and recreational settings. And let's talk about some challenges, some things that may be true for you, things that you're dealing with that we will hopefully address today. Sometimes coming up with ideas for creative writing assignments can be definitely difficult for students. Uh, you know, where do you start with creative writing? A lot of brainstorming activities, even at work, are visual, you know, right on the whiteboard, uh, coming up with things like that. So how do we deal with that? Sometimes there's a lack of access to performing arts activities. And so we're going to address those areas today and more. So let's turn it over first to Betsy Ann. Hi, hi everyone. How are you this afternoon? As uh, Paul said, my name is Betsy Ann Huggins and I'm an employee at the American Printing House. I just joined in December of 2020 and I'm really excited to be on the team. You might have seen me in the background on some of our high tech product webinars, but I'm really excited to be joining you guys today as a participant in this webinar. Uh, before joining APH, the majority of my career has been in theater education. However, I've never been a classroom theater teacher. Uh, I've mostly worked in alternative education, working through regional professional theaters, uh, going into classrooms um, of all types to teach playwriting, primarily for literacy acquisition, um, social emotional learning, the development of English language skills, um, and so on and so forth. So I'm really excited to really bridge my two loves today, theater education and accessibility. So let's talk about dramatic writing. That's what we're here to talk about today. Uh, what is dramatic writing? Well, first off, it's writing for the stage or screen. Today, uh, I'm really going to be thinking about theater, but you can also use these techniques when working on screenwriting. It's pretty much the same. Uh, but my favorite definition for dramatic writing is writing words that are going to be read out loud. Uh, so much of creative writing is meant to stay on the page or live in the reader's mind. Dramatic writing has this extra benefit that it is performative that we're writing words that are going to be read out loud and shared with the population. So that's our focus today. And we're gonna do that through the introduction um, of monologue. But first let's talk about dramatic writing and why use it in the classroom. Excellent. So dramatic writing and creative writing in general are core components in core curriculum across the states in America. Uh, but why focus on dramatic writing in the classroom? There are a few key reasons why I really believe in introducing dramatic writing into the classroom beyond just giving students the ability to be creative. Number one, it allows you to get students writing. We've all sat in front of a group of students who are reluctant to put pen to paper, reluctant to turn on a computer, reluctant to pull out their note taker from their backpack. Students who are adverse to putting pen to paper or getting started in general. Um, 
by allowing students to write creatively and write to a purpose, the purpose being a future performance, I have found great success in the classroom to getting students to write who haven't written before. Um, I've been in many a classroom where teachers come up to me and say, that student hasn't written anything all semester, but because we've given this student the freedom to express themselves, the, cre the creative power to generate ideas based off of prompts, this student has finally written something. We've got something for their writing portfolio to share with their other teachers. Uh, dramatic writing is a great tool to get kids started. Second of all, students have to learn formatting. Uh, and whether students are blind or visually impaired or students are sighted, formatting is a challenge and it's so onerous. Many of you might have joined us when uh, Elizabeth Whitaker from Vispera was here to talk about formatting and citation styles with JAWS. It is a doozy and getting kids to practice good formatting and good typing skills can be incredibly challenging. But I find if you give them a purpose, if you give them um, something to work towards, they will learn those formatting skills. Uh, screenwriting and playwriting uses really specialized formatting. We write plays in a very different way than we write uh, essays, than we write narrative uh, works. And to be able to communicate their ideas clearly and effectively, remember, a script doesn't live with the author, it gets passed on to someone else. So in order for that next person to be able to read, understand, and interpret what the artist has put down on the page, they have to learn to format. They've got to learn how to use parentheses. They need to learn how to use italics. They need to use offset formatting. Um, these are great ways to get students practicing those skills in a way that's exciting. They're not writing an essay. They're writing that there's an explosion in the distance, or they're uh, writing that a new character comes on stage. The monster enters with a great roar. They're writing something really exciting, and they're putting those potentially in stage directions and learning formatting. Next up, career opportunities. You might think that a career in creative writing uh, is a dead end, and I promise you it's not, because the basic uh, ethos of any creative writer is the ability to tell a story. Uh, and this is so necessary in so many different careers. Some that I jotted down are, of course, playwriter and screenwriter, but think of students who love video games. Uh, there are video game developers and story writers who write the narrative of what a gameplay will look like. Journalists and editors need storytelling skills. Speech writers also need the ability to craft an incredible story. Uh, script supervisors who work on TV and are the bridge between production and writing uh, need the skills of script writing and playwriting. Uh, and finally, it's all about process. Students who learn creative writing learn process, cause and effect relationships, how things are told. Um, and of course they have excellent typing and formatting skills. So it's a really great introduction to a variety of career opportunities that your students might not have thought of. My passion for theater arts comes from my passion with working with others. Uh, more than many different art forms, theater is a team sport. You write your script and it's handed off to other artists who get to have their input on your script, whether that's a small team, a writer, a director, and an actor, or a large team behind your favorite movie. Writing is a collaborative sport and it gets to live beyond just the author. Finally, some skills to mention. Uh, you're practicing empathy in action. When we write, we're literally stepping into the shoes of someone else. We're thinking through a new lens, seeing through a new lens. Um, and students are able to explore what it's like to be other people experiencing other challenges through the art of playwriting. It can also combine well with social emotional learning. Um, it's a safe way to explore emotions in the classroom. It's hard to talk about myself and the emotions I'm experiencing, but it might be easier to do that through the guise of another character I've created. I can also explore consequences. What's the cause and effect to some actions I may take? How do I set a goal and achieve it? How can I practice self-advocacy? How can I go after what I want? These are all skills that playwrights tackle within their, their work, within their script. And finally, uh, in addition to some core curriculum components, it, it, dramatic writing achieves many uh, exp expanded core curriculum 
components. And we'll talk about that a little bit later. So today, as I said, we're writing a monologue. This might be a word you've heard before, but let's go to the next slide and let's just dig a little deeper on what a monologue is. So one, a monologue is the opposite of dialogue. Dialogue is two characters speaking. A monologue is one character speaking for an extended period of time without interruption. It's spoken in the first person. So when I write, I'm using words like I, me, my, myself. I'm identifying as the character and stepping into their shoes and speaking through them. You might be confusing monologue with a few other variations of single character speech. So I just wanna address those variations real quick. So the first off is a soliloquy. Those of you who have studied Shakespeare might be familiar with this form. It's when a character speaks their thoughts aloud. They're, instead of keeping those thoughts internalized where nobody's able to hear or understand them, they're speaking those thoughts out loud. There's also an aside when character speaks and is heard by the audience, but not by other characters. So that's a little distinction between a soliloquy and an aside is the intention of letting the audience know. And finally, direct address. A character speaks directly to the audience. Usually other characters are unaware that this is happening. Uh, the biggest distinction between a monologue and so many other forms of speech is that it, a, a character is trying to accomplish something. So think of yourself pre-pandemic or post-pandemic, hopefully, when you're standing on an elevator with a stranger. If I'm speaking to them and I'm saying, nasty weather out there, wish I'd worn my rain boots, and I maybe shake my umbrella and say, I'm riding up to this floor and you know, I'm just small talking. That's not a monologue. A monologue, I need to be trying to achieve something. So maybe I step into the elevator and it's the boss. And this is my moment to make a first impression. But I'm dripping wet. It's been raining outside and it's super embarrassing. My makeup is running down my face. My hair is wet. I smell like a wet dog. That's going to give me some impetus to complete this monologue, to maybe give my elevator pitch uh, with a really clear goal or intention in mind. So that's what we're working towards is a monologue that has a goal that has an intended audience. And most importantly, like all dramatic writing, it is meant to be performed out loud. So today, I'm going to hand you off to David in just a moment, and we're going to learn more about audio jack. Um, we're going to be inspired by an audio jack, and we're going to jump into a few creative writing exercises. So I hope you either have your pen and paper, you've got your note taker, or you've got a computer plugged in and ready to go because we're going to get to writing. So I'm going to hand you over to David, and you'll see me after Live Forever. All right, and before we hand it over to David, we Sorry, want to throw in a poll question. Absolutely, that's on me. <laughs> no problem. So we just wanna know, what is a monologue? Pick the correct answer. So is it a speech given to a group of characters? Is it two characters speaking together? Is it one character speaking for an extended period of time? Or is it a speech given directly to the audience? What is a monologue? Which one of those things is a monologue? If you have any questions for Betsy Ann, if you have any comments or anything like that, feel free to throw those in the chat. If not, you'll definitely, I'm sure, have some things that you want to throw in there once we turn this over to David and find out more about Audio Jack. Absolutely. So I've tried to trip you up on this poll. So be very specific. What is a monologue? Awesome. Looks like Christopher's put an answer in the chat. And always feel free if you uh, can't access the poll or it's not working for you for any reason, you can always drop your response in the chat. All right, Nikki, how are we doing on the poll? We have about 60% answers in. Great. Go ahead and close it up here in just a couple seconds. All right. So it looks like 71% of attendees answered one character speaking for an extended amount of time. 
and 29% answered a speech given directly to the audience. Betsy Ann, what is the correct answer? Awesome. So 71% of you were correct. A monologue in its most broad definition is one character speaking for an extended amount of time. That's what we want to head on. For the 21% of you who said a speech given directly to the audience, that is a direct address. So I tripped some of you there. Uh, we're going to dig into this idea of a monologue being given, hopefully, to another character. We want to keep these monologues really active, really goal-oriented. So thank you for participating in that poll. Uh, and I'm going to hand it over to David. Oh, uh, thank you. And uh, that was a tricky question because I was reading it. I'm like, wait a minute. See what you're doing there. Ah. Um, <laughs> nice, Betsy. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, as introduced, I'm David Tobin. I'm the creator of Audio Jack, and I'm here to show you a bit about what we do here. We're going to jump in and do a really fun activity together, and it will highlight the elements of creative writing and dramatic storytelling and all the elements that Betsy has mentioned earlier, and you'll get to see how this is applied. And I figured the best way to do it is put you in the seat of the students. So you can experience it firsthand and go through it. Um, it's going to be really fun. And for those of you that don't know what an audio jack is and what we're doing here, I'm going to give you a brief explanation of it. So audio jack is the name of our company, and it all, it's also the name of the product. Each thing you listen to is called an audio jack. And uh, you can listen to it in the app or the website. We'll get to all that later and how you can get access to this and how it's used. But um, an audio jack is an audio based movie. That means there's no words, there's no video, and there's no music. It's hundreds of sounds that are edited together to tell a story for your imagination. And as you can see in the chat right there, there is the link so you can learn more about it. Um, and also, if you do, just so you do know, if you are looking at getting a subscription, we can talk about that later, please use this link for it because a portion of the proceeds go back to APH to help support programming. Um, but um, one thing I do want to mention is it's an audio-based movie. So it's all sound design. It's not just someone standing with a microphone and actors making the sounds. It's hundreds of pieces of elements of sound put together to activate your imagination and make you feel like you're in the middle of the story and actually works with the visual cortex and it allows your mind to really create some very vivid imagery. And we use authentic sounds from all walks of life from historical elements to contemporary ones to give you authentic experiences with inside each audio jack. So what you do is you listen to one. You would hit play and close your eyes and just listen the first time you hear it. And this is what we're going to do today as well. Uh, so you're going to listen to one. You're going to close your eyes and just listen to the audio jack. This one is called Live Forever. It's in our action adventure category. And you're going to hear it for the first time and your imagination is going to go all over the place. You're going to be like, what was that? I just heard all these crazy things and the story is going to start to form because we all have an association to sound. Um, it's one of those things that's always on. Our ears are always on unless they're covered up. But we always have an association to it. What that association is, that's up to you. And that's the kind of beauty of an audio jack is we never tell you the actual story behind it. So there's never a wrong answer. So the first time you listen to it, it's like, okay, I just heard that. Then you're going to hear the exact same one a second time. This uh, is so you can process and put it together. Um, this is the brainstorming part of the exercise. So you're going to hear it the second time and you're going to brainstorm and start writing out your ideas and start making the story what you want it to be. And that's the real core of this is you're creating the narrative and then afterward we're going to share what the stories have become what they are and we're going to go around the room and share we're actually going to work this into a monologue activity that betsy is going to uh, elaborate on but i don't want to get too far ahead of myself here with any of that stuff so first we just want to get in here and jump in and give you an experience and let you kind of take the first step so betsy i think we can kind of jump into this and get everyone going what do you think Let's do it. Let's listen this first time. We're not going to give you any prompts. Just as David said, keep those eyes closed and just listen and experience the audio, Jack. Yes. And as soon as they make me a host, I will be able to share. So can Paul do that really quickly and make me a host in the session? I believe uh, Nikki can help you with that, but let me pull this Okay. Up. Awesome. Nikki. If yeah. I can help.
One second, everyone. We're going to get this sorted. And I'm going to share. What we're going to do is I'm actually going to share the Audio Jack app. We're going to jump inside. And now I'm the host. Hey, there we are. Yeah, Excellent. you should be good to go now. Thanks, Nikki. No problem. Awesome. Great. So here we go. So I am going to jump in here. And you could all do this with your classrooms. And we've been doing this. It's, it's super easy to use. And it's a great tool because you can do it through Zoom. It's really easy to use Audio Jack. Um, you just mirror your device, whatever it is. It works over AirPlay, um, or you can directly connect. And there we go. We are now inside the iPad version of the Audio Jack app for you to see. And you see there's the different categories and whatnot. And uh, there's the activities, which we can get into later. We'll talk about that. But those have the step-by-step -step instructions to get you to where you're going. Um, so as mentioned, we're hopping into the action adventure category. And right there in the center is live forever. So I'm going to select that option and I'm going to hit the repeat button and it'll repeat once. So the first time you're going to hear this, just relax, let your imagination go and whatever happens, happens. And the great thing about this is it's all sound design. Like if I break my water glass, it doesn't go libre in France. It's the same sound. Uh, so there's no language, gender or race barrier with this audio jack. It allows us all to connect. Um, and if you come up with a crazy story and you think, you know, you're running through the forest, you're being chased by a teddy bear and lasers are coming out of their eyes, then that's what the story is. And that's awesome. And we want to hear it. Um, so don't worry if this gets weird. This is definitely from our action adventure category. It's going to have some fun sci-fi stuff in it that I think you're going to enjoy. So um, I'm going to mute myself. I'm going to mute the room as well, just so everyone's audio doesn't get mixed in with what we're doing here. And then we'll check back in. So without further ado, uh, sit back, relax, and enjoy. Here we go.
All right, so that same audio, Jack, is gonna play one more time. Now, make the story what you want it to be. Start brainstorming and configuring the narrative that you wanna create, and then we'll jump into the next stage. Enjoy. one fade out as it ends. <laughs> 
Nice. Well, there you go. There is an audio, Jack. You've now heard it twice. That one's called Live Forever. I was actually in my little Think Create Right book. I was writing out my story ideas. It changes for me every single time. Um, that was fun. Uh, so there we go. Hopefully you've had a chance to come up with some imagery. I'm sure you all had something pop up inside your mind at some point during that. And here we go. Nice. And do we need to hand it over to you? Because I'm still labeled as a host. Betsy, are you good? Okay, great. I think I'm good. Um, the only question is when we come up to polls, if Nikki will need to take back host responsibility so she can launch them. Yes. All right. Perfect. Excellent. So welcome back, everyone. Uh, that was quite an experience. So this was the first audio jack I ever listened to. And I think about it all the time, not only because I'm a fan of science fiction and I hear uh, lots of elements that draw me to my favorite stories uh, in science fiction, but also because there's such energy um, and there's a suggestion of conflict, which I really appreciate about this audio jack. So let's get to the next slide, Nikki. So let's go back to monologues. Uh, hopefully you guys have some really great ideas about where we are as we craft this monologue. Uh, there are five key elements to any monologue that I'm gonna break down for you before we begin writing this piece. Number one is a setting. Setting is place and time. So not only is it a physical lo location, which we can really drill down, okay? Are we on Earth or are we on another planet in the solar system? Are we in the United States or are we on what's left of the United States? Are we in the middle of the ocean? Really drilling down where we are. And also thinking about the time. Is this the past, the present, the future? Are we in a time loop scenario? Uh, is time running backwards or forwards? Um, where are we in time? And hopefully, oh, I love dropping in the chat. I felt like it was in the War of the Worlds. Fantastic. That was definitely uh, a science fiction favorite that came to mind. Uh, so as you're thinking about this monologue, define that place and time for you. It's going to be different for everyone. And that's the beauty of this exercise. The next thing uh, we need to define for our monologue is our character's want or goal. Um, I'm a big fan of starting a monologue as a uh, dramatic writing process without fully defining my character. I'm not going to write my character's backstory. I'm going to write who they are right now in the present. And that's going to help my brain really jump into to that empathetic moment of stepping into their shoes of what it means to be them at this moment in their lives. So think about that clear want or goal. What does your character want in this moment? And what's standing in their way? That brings us to number three, an obstacle or a problem. Uh, if a character wants an iPhone, there's some pretty clear ways to get that. But what if they don't have money or uh, they have been banned from the Apple store due to prior poor behavior? Uh, or they're too their parents say they're too young to have a phone. Uh, we can think about our goal or our want is something physical, something we can see, smell, taste, touch. Or we can think about something much larger. I want safety. I want love. I want respect. Uh, but we can usually tie something that's really tangible and physical to something much larger, much grander. It's not just that I want an iPhone. I want the ability to uh, connect with my friends. I want the ability to have the same stature or status as other peers in my community. Thinking about what, what's tying to what reason that we want something and why we can't get it immediately. Uh, there seems like there are a ton of obstacles in this audio jack. There's a lot of conflict. There's lots standing in a potential character's way. Finally, think of your intended audience. We drilled down before we listened to the audio jack about the definition of a monologue. And this is gonna be really important for this exercise. I want you to place someone or something else in this story. Who are your, is your character speaking to? Is it uh, someone they're in allegiance with? Is it a secret enemy? Uh, is it a real enemy, perceived or otherwise? Uh, is it a stranger? Is it a known relation? Is it family? Is it friends? Is it a coworker? Who are they speaking to directly? This is gonna really help with that want or goal. Typically, when we think about soliloquies, asides, and direct addresses, they're mostly about emotion. I am feeling this right now, but there's usually not a lot of action behind them. Think about some of Shakespeare's most famous monologues. 
It's people who are trying to talk themselves through a problem. They're not super active. In this monologue, I want you to pick another character. Doesn't have to be a human. It could be anything in the entire universe that you can speak to. Um, and it doesn't need to speak back. That's also the genius thing about a monologue. It doesn't need to speak back. So think about your intended audience. And finally, I call it a need to tell. Monologues often come at moments of heightened excitement uh, or just really any heightened emotion. Otherwise, why in the world are you talking so much? You need to be at your happiest, at your saddest, at your most afraid, at your most ready to fight for this monologue to really have strong impact. So let's go to the next slide. So in monologue writing, I do like to jump in, but first I want you to make three lists and I'm gonna walk through you this. I've got my phone, I'm gonna time us. In your early writings, when we listened to Audio Jack for the, the second time, you probably were starting to picture a setting, starting to picture characters. But to help us drill down for this monologue, here's what I want you to do. If you're writing on a piece of paper, you can make a numbered list, one, two, three, all the way through 20 on the side of your piece of paper or you can't really see it, I'm on this like silly background. Uh, you can do it on your computer, you can do it on a refreshable braille display or your note taker. Uh, you can go ahead and put those numbers in or what I'm going to ask you to do is for one minute, I want you to write what you want. And I want you to come up with hopefully 10 plus things that your character could want. So don't, don't slap yourself at the first idea. You could want safety. Uh, what does that mean to you? Really drill down in this exercise. Uh, you could want um, the keys to a car. If that's your first idea, write that down, but then keep digging into it and coming up with other ideas as well. The goal is to come up with 10 plus ideas of what your character in this situation could want. I want you to push past your first idea. I want you to say, my first thing I was thinking about in this monologue is I need my car keys push past that. Okay. Is everybody ready? I'm going to put one minute on the clock. And for that one minute, I want you to do nothing but write a list of things that your character could want in this scenario. Is everyone ready? We're going to start in three, two, one, write your list. We're at the halfway mark, keep pushing. If you find yourself stopping, I want you to give me three more at least, three more once. Think about all the things that you need in this moment. What do you want the most? And we're ending in three, two, one. Pencils down, hands at the rest. I want everybody to breathe in with me really deeply and breathe out just as deeply and slowly. And I want you to just reflect on yourself in that exercise. Does timed writing work for you? For me, it really does. I like that input of having a, a limit or a clock to fight against or to work towards. For you, you might be like, this was the most stressful moment in my life. And I totally understand and appreciate that. We're gonna do time writing during this monologue exercise, just so we're making sure we're, we're making fast decisions, we're making good decisions. Uh, and we're, we're allowing our first impulses to come out onto the page. And then we're gonna see if we can dig any deeper. So please in the chat, if you'd like, Share your most exciting want. What really, when you looked at it on the page, did you say, ooh, I hadn't really thought of that at first. Give me your most exciting thing or idea you could want. And I've worked with a lot of teenagers and I am happy to wait. 
and stuff is coming in the chat. Ooh, Cindy wants a type of transport. Nancy wants to not get captured. Laura wants to freeze a moment in time. Cheryl wants hope. Excellent. Kirsty wants to escape. Excellent. Any other ideas of what you could want? All right, to travel to an uninhabited place. No regret. A rendezvous, ooh. I want a weapon, absolutely fantastic. So we've come up, hopefully you've got a really great list of things that you want in this moment. I want you to circle your top one. What's the thing in this monologue you're gonna want? Great. If we were in a classroom, I would typically have you share your whole list with someone sitting next to you, someone I might call your elbow buddy. You could even do this through the chat uh, or with uh, many other different poll features like raising your hand or something. I feel like because dramatic writing is a shared art, it's so fantastic to get input early. If you're like, mm, I want a gun uh, in this moment and your friend's like, Ooh, but I actually see down here, I think this is more interesting. Go with this. It's nice to have that input early. I like that idea of a shared art, but go ahead and circle your favorite one. And you can either get to a new page, you can erase what you've written so far, as long as you keep your one idea in mind. And we're gonna make another list in a minute. It's surprising how long a minute is when we're silent. So I'm gonna write, we're gonna write for another minute. I want you to make another list. Who could you be speaking to? Define that character. Remember, a character can be a person, place, or thing as long as it has feelings and the ability to advocate for itself, the ability to be an active participant in a story. A, a pen is a pen until it starts talking back to me. Again, we're doing a monologue, not a dialogue, but you get the drift. A pen is just a pen until I give it a voice, a spirit, a want, a goal, and the ability to be an active participant in the story. So I want you to write a list of who you could be speaking to. It can be names, it can be relationships, it can be identities. And we're gonna do that in three, two, one. More than halfway through, push yourself. Give me at least three more. Who all could you be speaking to? And you can keep it in this moment. Who is there with you, around you? Who can you find? Who finds you? And we'll end in three, two, one. Big breath in. And slow breath out. Whew. I'm going to shake that out. Excellent. Just like last time, I want you to take a look at your list. I want you to think about what's the most interesting and what's the most exciting to you in this moment. And I want you to put it in the chat. Share with me what's the most interesting possibility. of all of the people, of all of the things, who can you speak to in this moment? Ooh, my deceased mother, excellent. Maybe calling on a ghost to help you in your journey. Or maybe in this world, ghosts live among us. The deceased never really leave. <gasps> Someone to whom I tell this story when I get home someday, great. So we're thinking about what is reflection, what is retroactive, excellent. I hope we're still thinking about that goal, what we want from the person who hears the story. Is it that they believe us? 
Do, they, do we need them to believe us? Do we need to relay important information? Keep thinking about that. An unborn child. I want the barking dogs to tell me what is going on. Why are they making so much noise? Oh, I love that. Yes, involve the dogs. Um, entrepreneur, interesting. Cindy, I need to be in your brain because that did not come up on my sheet. Excellent. Any more ideas? I'm really into this idea of time loops, time dilations, parallel universes. So I'm thinking about maybe writing to my, my character five minutes ago. I'm speaking to myself, the, the myself that I find who is me five minutes ago. Ooh, the mass crowd. Ooh, you guys, I love it. This is great. Excellent. And we're going to do it one more time. We're going to think about how we're going to get it. In the theater world, we call this tactics. Uh, it's just like a tackle box in fishing. You don't bring one set of flies with you on your fishing trip. You bring many different types of flies because not all flies work for all fish. So think about all of the tactics, all of the ways you can get what you want. In theater, we often think of them as two plus verb. So T-O plus verb. So I can bribe to bribe. I can beg to beg, I can take, I can rob, I can, I can do all sorts of things. So last one minute writing exercise, come up with as many ways to get what you want as possible. All right, and we're gonna do that in three, two, one. Halfway through, keep pushing yourself. Give me at least three more ideas. How are you gonna get what you want? Use any tactic at your disposal. This is life or death. And we'll end our writing in three, two, one. Big breath in. And slow breath out. Excellent. So I know where you are. You're right at the precipice of writing and you want me to stop talking so you can write. For some students, it might take a little more pushing to get them started. For some students, uh, if I'm a teacher, I might start my students with uh, a phrase. Hey, did you hear that? What was that? Why are the dogs barking? I could give them a prompt like that to begin their writing. But after coming up with these three lists, I really hope that you are in that space. You know exactly who you're talking to. You know exactly what you want and you know exactly how you're gonna try and get it. And remember a monologue is for an extended period of time. Uh, for my students in the classroom, I always said five sentences minimum. And that's like bare minimum. When you read five sentences to map, Depending on their complexity, you're talking about less than a minute. So I want you to give me shoot for 10. If you hit 10, shoot for 20 sentences. Um, take a look at your lists. You're going to try all of those, all of those tactics to get what you want. Because remember, a monologue is an extended period of time. If I say, hey, David, I'd like an iPhone, and David's like, you got it, end of monologue. The monologue didn't even have a chance to begin. But if I know that David is not going to give me the iPhone, I'm going to have to try so many different tactics to get him to give me the iPhone. I can reason with him. I can cajole him. I can threaten him. I can beg. I can plead. I can rob him. I can, I can do all sorts of different things, but I'm going to have to try multiple avenues to get what I want. So think about that list. You can scale it in complexity, your easiest solution to your worst solution, but you've got now some tactics to play with. So what we're going to do is it's called wet ink writing, and it's literally what we've just been practicing. I ask you to keep your pen or your fingers, whatever you're writing with, I ask you to keep it moving during our one minute brainstorming exercises. And I want you to do the same thing now. This is pretty simple with a pen. 
you just keep writing. If you get stuck on a word, I want you to keep writing that word over and over again. So if you get stuck on the word and, just keep writing and until you come up with the next word. With typing, sometimes I just press period and I let the period fill up the page until I come up with the next word. We are going to have plenty of time to look at our work and revise. Uh, but one of my most um, important maxims about writing is you cannot create while you are also trying to destroy. So you cannot edit your work at the same time you are writing. You just have to let that creative mind flow. So I'm gonna give us five minutes and I want you to just keep writing. If you make a spelling mistake, move on. If you make uh, a writing mistake, move on. Grammar, doesn't matter. Just keep those ideas flowing out of you for five minutes. I'm going to do it as well. So you can do it on a piece of paper. You can do it on your computer. You can do it on your note taker. We're going to have an opportunity in a moment to share these with each other. It'll be easier if they're typed in a Word document, but no worries. However you want to work is best for you. And if you want to receive uh, feedback by sharing your story, again, that is completely up to you. So let's all get ready. And I will set the timer for five minutes. Do you want me to play the audio jack again so people can keep pulling from it and hear it again while this is happening in the background? Absolutely. No, I, I definitely want it again. Someone had actually said in the chat that um, there was a, 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 a heavy storm while the audio jack was playing. So they were getting kind of a dual experience. That is also happening to me right now. It is raining cats and dogs outside. So let's play that audio jack um, and do a five minute wet ink. So we'll yeah, pause I, for a second. Yeah, make me the host again and I'll do that. And this is also part of using audio jack. One of the things we've noticed in classrooms and we work with you know, classrooms all over the planet with this, that kids have a tough time just writing in silence. And it, we encourage people to have the audio jack keep playing. So it's not silent. So you can keep pulling from this information while you're experiencing it. And it'll keep the students engaged, keeps you engaged because you're hearing this story continue on. Um, and so I'm going to share the exact same audio, Jack. We're going to do the exact same thing um, that we just did before. Uh, it's going to be the same one. And we're not going to do the same thing. We're going to continue. And once I get my iPad set up here, user error. <laughs> Okay, I am all set. So whenever you're ready, Betsy, you take it away. All right, we're gonna start this wet ink exercise. Again, that means writing the whole time, not stopping, not correcting our grammar, not going back and fixing. If you need to kind of pause your brain for a minute, if you're typing, you can use your period or your space bar to continue that line of thought. If you're writing, you can repeat the same word or you can just scribble. You can do like a scribbly line just to keep your pen moving, but we're gonna keep our pen moving. We're not gonna censor ourselves. We're gonna let our ideas come out for five minutes. And we're gonna do that in three. You ready, David? Two, and play that audio jack. And there it is. And here we go.
Okay, you guys have about, what, 15, 20 seconds left? And they're five minutes? And I think some of you guys are muted. Yeah. Apologies, I was muted. So we've hit our five minute limit. Take a deep breath in. And a slow breath out. If you were, if you find yourself like crunched up, holding in your tension during that exercise, I know we put you in a stressful environment again. So feel free to shake it out just for a second and look at your work and congratulate yourself. You entered this webinar, maybe with the idea that we'd be creative writing and some of you are just along for the ride, but congratulate yourself. You went in without a written piece of work and you're leaving with a written piece of work. Take a look at your, your monologue. I'm going to time you for another five minutes. In this five minutes, you have my permission to go back, edit spelling mistakes, move passages, rewrite. This is your five minutes to really think about the clarity of this monologue. Is, is your character defined enough, at least for this monologue? Is there a sense of who this person is? Is it clear what they want, what their goal is? Is it clear who they're speaking to? Or could that be better defined? And finally, are they trying enough tactics? Are they trying enough ways to solve their problem? Or are they jumping to the conclusion? So I'm gonna give you five more minutes to go back, edit your monologue, try and get it to your climax, try and get it to that most exciting point of the story. You don't have to resolve this monologue. That might be future writing, but I want you to really see if you can distill the essence of what this is in the next five minutes. So we're gonna get started in three, two, one. And this time there's bad audio, Jack.
30 seconds left in your writing editing time. I always find that for students, editing's the hardest part, and so time limits often help. If I were in the classroom, I could play music, uh, but I'm really enjoying the rain right now and, and the experience of sitting in my kind of darkened room from the rain um, and writing. It kind of fits with the atmosphere of the work that I'm doing. So go ahead and close up those thoughts. We're not uh, aiming for perfect. We're not aiming for perfection on this first draft. Um, but I'd like you now to take a moment, mute your mic. I think most of us are already muted. Not me, I'm speaking right now. But go ahead and mute your mic. And I want you to just read this monologue out loud to yourself. Monologues, because they are intended to not live on the page, they're, in they're intended to breathe, they're intended to live within another human. I want you to read your monologue. Uh, that's going to tell you a lot about the content. Uh, narrative writing does really well with long, florid sentences full of adjectives, adverbs, descriptive language. Monologues don't. The way we write in creative writing is often very different from the way we write in dramatic writing. People tend to speak in pretty short sentences with pretty standard subject, verb, object, ordering of our, our words. We also tend uh, in monologues, we ask a lot of questions because we can't get that feedback from the other person. But think about how many questions you're asking. Why aren't you getting a response? See if you can tailor in your monologue why the person might not be speaking back to you. Why aren't you getting the response you need? Why do you have to keep pushing? So let's mute our, our mics. And it shouldn't take more than two to three minutes for us to do this. I'm going to do it as well with my monologue. I'm going to read it out loud. And that's going to give me some ideas for revision. I'm also going to ask Jim at this point to drop a Google Doc into the chat. Now, this is for the brave, the very brave. I ask if you would like to share your monologue with our group that you drop your monologue into this shared document. Don't worry about it. We're all trying something new. Um, I've never written this monologue before. You've never written your monologue before. And these are works in progress. So if you're brave, you can go ahead. Yes, Jim says, be brave, be bold. Drop your, your monologue into the chat. But for now, let yourself read this monologue back. That's going to, again, give you some ideas for revision. And again, the work we're sharing on this, uh, this Google Doc is not perfect, and it's not the end. So three minutes to read your monologue out loud, and we'll mute our. Thank you, Cindy, for dropping yours in the chat. That's awesome. Thank you for sharing. I live in the 1800s, so my internet bugs out uh, whenever it rains, just like it did to the pilgrims. They also experience internet difficulties. But feel free to drop your, your writing in the chat after you finish speaking it to yourself. Some things you might notice as you're speaking it to yourself are that maybe the sentences are too long. Maybe you're asking too many questions. Um, creative writers will tell you it's good to vary your sentence length. That's even more important with uh, writing monologues. And think about how people speak. People do not speak in grammatically correct sentences. People do not finish their thoughts. Are there thoughts that maybe you don't complete? Are there ums, are there ahs? Think about 
how this monologue, if you had to give it to someone else to perform, what you would need to write into the monologue to give the performer a real sense of who this character is. This drives teachers nuts, by the way, in classrooms where I tell children, you're allowed to write with poor grammar, you're allowed to write with incomplete sentences, and the teacher is like, oh no, everything I've worked for. But it's really great to take what you usually can't do and break the rules. Oh, I usually have to write in complete sentences, but now I can break the rules. Uh, I usually have to speak with like very proper dialect, but now I can code switch. I could maybe use a dialect I'm using at home with my peers, and I can bring that into academia. It's a really profound thing to let a, a child use their own way of speaking in the classroom. Excellent. Oh, we've done a lot of writing today, guys, a lot of monologue writing. Let's see if we've got people who would love us to share. So, Cindy, we've got yours in the chat. We can have that read out loud. Are there any ones uh, coming in through the shared doc? My internet is super bugs right now, and I don't want to miss anything that's coming in. So, Nikki, Jim, David, Paul, if anything's coming in and you see it, can you let me know? All right, Cindy, do you mind giving us um, a permission from you to share your work out loud? Again, this is not a planned or perf like we haven't perfected delivering your monologue yet, but would you mind if we, excellent, Cindy says sure we can read it out loud. So David, can I actually pass it to you to read the Atlantis monologue out loud? Absolutely, I'd be honored. Hopefully Great. I will butcher it, Cindy. Uh, here we go. Atlantis has always been a source of fascination. It's widely believed to be fictitious, but new data indicates this isn't true. But how to find it? Did you hear that sound? That's the sound of a half spaceship, half ocean liner. The plans for this hybrid have been made, and as you can see, scientifically sound. This hybrid vessel is capable of plummeting through the ocean just as a spaceship is capable of gliding through space. We've gathered you together as a group of forward-thinking individuals who would be interested in this exciting exploration of Atlantis. How's that, Cindy? Was that okay? Absolutely, Cindy. Big applause for Cindy for being number one, brave enough to put our idea on paper, and number two, brave <laughs> enough to share. Thank you so much for letting us experience that work. I love the direction you took it in. Um, having it be a, a speech that I can imagine to a council of esteemed scientists thinking about this new uh, underwater slash space hybrid. Absolutely. Oh, we just nice. had another I one like come it. in from Alexander. Ooh. Ooh, excellent. Oh, fantastic. So Alexander, do we have your permission to share out loud? Alexander, you can just say yes or no in the chat. Oh, sure. Excellent. Yep. David, we got another monologue for you to read. Excellent. Happy to oblige. All right, Alexander. The mistakes I made led up to this moment. As the warped, contorted faces of the great wolves snarl in contempt, I feel an immense sense of guilt, not just for the pain that I've caused to the animals, but for my family as well. My honor has been cast aside in favor of pointless bloodlust. I've kept running from the monsters born out of my misdeeds. It's about time I allowed the consequences to take me. Broken, bloodied, and scarred, all I could do is smile. Smile for the resolution to the sick, twisted game of cat and mouse. It bears no similarity to its beginning, but it was always meant to be like this. At last now, I lay down my weapons and let the beyond decide my fate. Loss, that is my greatest gift. Oh, fantastic. Alexander, Cindy, Amanda. thank you guys so much You're for intense. jumping into I like it. this. <laughs> You're giving us such great examples of monologues. So keep dropping those in the chat or in the doc. Um, and Nikki, go to my next slide. I want to make sure in our last 10 minutes, we get to all of this really important content. So writing is rewriting. Uh, here's where you can take this with your students. Uh, number one, check their formatting. Ask students to go back and make sure that what they've written is what they intend. This is especially profound if you're having students switch monologues for performance. Having to give up your work to someone else means it needs to be in a great state. So it's a really great way to check formatting. Uh, some key things to mention about monologue formatting. Remember, uh, scripted drama does not use quotation marks. We only use quotation marks 
when uh, narrative is the default. When speaking is the default, we don't need these, but we do need stage directions. So that's a really fun thing to add. When they're embedded in text, you can put them in parentheses, Inter open parentheses, close parentheses, and you can put your stage direction in the middle. So again, you're getting students really excited about formatting. Can be really geeky, but once they're able to add, you know, ideas of wolves snarling in the background or the scientists snickering at this like rogue man who's talking about this hybrid ship, you can think of all the ways that they can use stage directions. Uh, for students who might not be familiar with dramatic writing, I suggest looking at monologues online, dissecting them, um, and considering, oops, I am on the wrong slide in my notes, thank you. <laughs> um, just notice that myself. So check your formatting, excellent uh, stage directions. Share with your classmates. I love doing the swap. I take your monologue, you take my monologue. If you've got more time in the class, add a director, an outside pair, outside pair of eyes and ears who can be adding their own artistic interpretation to the text and prepare for performance. Uh, think about who the audience is. Is it another class? Is it their parent? Um, are you recording it maybe on studio recorder? Check it out. We're going to do some more work on dramatic writing with Studio Recorder. I've also got my thing up. I'm just like, I'm so excited about writing, you guys. It's probably like <laughs> I'm swimming in the background. Nikki, next slide, please. So receiving feedback. This is actually the toughest thing we do in playwriting is receiving feedback. I like to think of my writing as a small, tiny, precious baby. I've worked so hard on my baby. I've given it so much love. I've given it all my heart and all my creativity. And when I release it into the world, I don't want it to be crushed. So here's some ground rules when you're introducing feedback in your class. Number one, set ground rules. I love to have students add to a piece of paper or I can scribe for them on the board or in a shared folder or document on Google Docs of how we want to feel when our work is being read out loud. That's gonna hopefully point you to, we need to stay silent when work is written because that's how we would like um, ourselves to, to, to feel it safe and comfortable during our monologue sharing. So set ground rules with your class. Is, uh, do we start with an applause? Do we end with an applause? Um, do we all close our eyes while work is being shared? What are the rituals around work sharing in your classroom? Next, it's not about like or don't like. Um, that's usually not a really great way to get good feedback. I always tell my students and they always like go, <gasps> what? Um, I hate comic book movies. Like I don't understand them. If I were the director uh, or if I was leading uh, whatever cinematic universe Marvel falls under, I would have been like, absolutely not. I do not green light these movies. I think they're, they're just silly and I don't like them. And I would have missed out on billions and billions of dollars in revenue and I would eventually have been fired because that's all about taste. <laughs> it's about aesthetics, about whether or not I like comic books. Um, but it doesn't matter. There's an audience for literally everything. So I always stay away from words like like or don't like. Instead, I ask three questions. The first one is what's working. I ask students to define what is working, which can also be defined as what are you going to remember in a week's time? If you had to explain this monologue to someone else, what are words you would use to describe it? Is it the characters, the setting? Is the want clear? Um, can you describe and define those? Is the writing unique, specific, and tailored to the situation and character at hand? What are those shiny words that you might use to describe it later on? Second, I ask what is unclear? What needs clarifying? What can be improved in a future draft? Uh, this is our shortest moment. Uh, again, I shut down anytime I have a student who says, I don't like, or like this was bad. You can go ahead and shut down that language. It's just not helpful. What I do like to add is permissioned what ifs. I ask a playwright, hey, would you like suggestions from your peers as to what happens next? And they can let me know. I think we are maybe in Louisville getting a uh, storm warning coming through. So apologies for that, but it's made for oh, great atmospheric writing. Yes, I think it's, there's <laughs> like a like, weather announcement an coming yet. through. Yes. So permission what ifs is giving the playwright the, the determining factor of whether or not they want suggestions. Sometimes playwrights want suggestions and sometimes they don't. And just because you take a suggestion doesn't mean you need to incorporate it in your writing. And next slide, please. Tips for teachers. Uh, teachers are often afraid to uh, bring dramatic writing into their classroom because they say, I'm not a playwright, I'm not a screenwriter, I don't know anything about this. Well, you do. You know how stories are told. 
you know that stories have beginnings, middles, and ends. You understand the basic blocks of storytelling because it's really ingrained in us in humans. Take what you know and bring it into the classroom. Um, it's so much more important to get started than to hold that fear that you're not enough to bring this to your students because your students are gonna show you that they, they're they ready to do this, that they're ready to begin on dramatic writing. Share those monologue examples with your class. Practice identifying elements of monologues within, within the monologues. Can you identify character, goals, setting, wants, obstacles? Consider co side coaching students both through Audio Jack and through their writing. You heard me say things like, give me three more. You heard me say things like, you have 30 seconds left. You heard me say things um, about breathing and breathing out. These are really important for a lot of students to, to give them side coaching. During the audio jack, I could say things like, why is that dog barking? What do you think it hears? I could say, what's that sound? Where are we? I can prompt students to get their creative juices flowing if they're having trouble. And finally, we always wanna uh, be able to perform anything we write down. So next slide. And that is our poll question. Do we still wanna go with that? We have time for that still? I don't think we do. So we're gonna skip this poll question. You can think on your own later, my TVIs out there, about how ECC can be fulfilled within dramatic writing. So we'll go to the next slide. Again, I'm sorry, we just got so it wrapped up in this writing exercise. We are gonna offer a part two with David on June 23rd. We're gonna look at dialogue also with audio jack. So stay tuned. And next slide, this is important. So we'll keep this one. So David, I'll hand it off to you to talk about how uh, teachers can use audio jack in the classroom. David, I think you're muted. I can't hear you. Muted. Sorry about that. Uh, uh, when all the sounds happened, I thought it was me. So I muted everything. <laughs> um, okay. Uh, <laughs> that's what happens when you work at Audio Jack. Um, so the thing that we found from a lot of teachers, a lot of instructors, there are inside the app when you download it, you know, the link that we provided here, go through APH, you can get subscriptions for you. There's a free version as well. You can try out and engage with it. But the main thing we found for teachers is this is a way to kind of create a reward mechanism inside your writing classes. Like start off the lesson with, hey, we're gonna do something fun today. We're gonna to do this thing called an audio jack and then get into it, let them hear it. Say, okay, I want you to brainstorm now. I want you to try this now and then kind of work them through it. Then after they turn in their work or you complete the, the exercise, whether it's that day or later, afterward, tell them the, uh, the skills they just used. Instead of setting it up at the beginning and saying, okay, today we're gonna to use these skills, bam, 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 bam. What that does is that creates stress and anxiety and starts putting pressure on the kids. And yes, I understand that there's there's reasons for that in other you know times. But in general, by not saying that and just jumping into it, we're gonna do a fun activity. It's kind of like how my parents got me to take medicine as a kid. It was fun, it was something, wow. And the next thing I know, hey, I took the medicine. Um, but at the end, when you tell the students, here's all the skills you just used and you start explaining it to them, it empowers them like you wouldn't believe because it's showing them that they already had this with inside themselves. And that's a really unique way to use it. Also, you can take audio jack and use it in your own way. I know a lot of Orient, if you don't have a classroom, yes, you can definitely do this in your listening exercises. Just like you saw us use it here with Zoom, you can hit share your screen with your device and bam, you can start sharing this with other people. Or if you're just in there over a speaker system, let people talk, let people hang out and experience this. Because the really neat thing about Audio Jack is whether you're sighted or not, you have a way to engage. So this has also become a wonderful tool for parents to be able to engage their uh, visually impaired uh, children because they can connect on the same level. And there's no wrong answer with these stories. These are whatever you want it to be and they change. So it's a tool for you to use and explore and I can't wait to hear how you use it. And of course, if you have questions, you can reach out to APH, reach out to myself at Audio Jack. We're happy to help you um, move this along and do it. And then for our next session that we're doing in the summer with uh, dialogue, that'll be fantastic. And I cannot wait for that because it really gets to show how these all kind of build on it. and. Um, really neat and also for you history teachers out there other people out there there are other audio jacks that allow you to connect in different ways and hey there's jim hey jim great well let's there blast we sorry, did I, I, yeah sorry about that <laughs> no you did great um we're gonna just blast through the rest of these slides acs we understand if you need to head out um but we'll blast through 
we're going to go past that poll question and we'll talk about discovery. So Paul, I hand it over to you for discoveries. Okay. Let me get there real quick. No worries. We've been jumping around. <laughs> go, go, go. Yep. So we've seen that uh, dramatic writing, it can help with understanding core curriculum and expanded core curriculum. Uh, some of those things you can look at and figure out which areas specifically would benefit you. Uh, monologues are a great introduction to dramatic writing. And AudioJack provides accessible material to get that started. It can be used in integrated classrooms for inclusion. And really, there's no barriers to performing arts using AudioJack. Uh, Braille Blaster, I'm gonna real briefly mention that. Well, actually, go ahead, Betsy, and go ahead and talk about that because it affects what you uh, wanted to say about formatting. Absolutely. So for those of you out there who are working with students who use Braille, I just want to mention Braille Blaster. That is a APH free product that you can find at brailleblaster.org. Uh, it has several different theater options to help with formatting uh, theatrical text and dramatic writing in Braille. It has both prose and verse play options. So if your student is writing Shakespeare or if they're writing a more contemporary drama, there are options within Braille Blaster. And they also have stage direction help. So again, formatting is one of the greatest challenges that any playwright comes across, but there are tools within Braille Blaster, which is a free software app that you guys can uh, provide for your students to help them write their own stories. All right, next slide, I think is our last plug for AudioJack. So thank you, David, for being with us today. Uh, Let me go what over real quick, the pricing for everybody. Yes, let's do it. Uh, David? All right. Yeah, sure. Okay, so uh, we know you love AudioJack. We know it's amazing. And you're like, my God, this is going to be so expensive, but it's not. So here's the great thing about this. We made this incredibly affordable so everyone has access to it. If you want to get an annual subscription, one annual subscription, is $14.99. That comes out to a $1.25 per month. Uh, that's if you buy the annual subscription. And if you're doing it for a program of 100 and larger, or whatever, we offer bulk discounts, we can talk about that. But if you want just a monthly subscription to AudioJack, it's $2.99. Yes, you can get it for everyone in your program, so they have it to use when they go home. But if you can only bring one in for one device, you can do that as well. And you can get this all on APH's website. Don't go to our website, go to APHs, and then I'll take you to our website, but go there first. <laughs> thank you, David. So uh, thank you for being here today. This was so much fun. I loved getting back to my roots in dramatic writing. I hope everybody had as much fun as I did, clearly, since we just went right over time. <laughs> thank you guys for being here today and come back on June 23rd for round two. We're going to look at dialogue. Uh, thank you for having me again. Thank you, everyone out there, all the teachers and everyone that's participated and everyone at APH. This is just wonderful. I think we I think we kicked it up a notch today in the uh, in the area of Access Academy. Uh, nicely done. I mean, that just kind of came um, running through. So remember, this is recorded and uh, we will uh, post it down the road. And uh, I can't wait to, to to do this again in June. So really well done betsy and david thank you so much nikki good job on the controls there huh <laughs>